Hey everyone, welcome to a short Node Red tutorial using NCD products. Today we're going to be talking about the MCP23008. Uh, MCP23008 is an I2C GPIO multiplexer. It gives you eight GPIO ports and mounts to the I2C bus. There are several different ways that you can use the uh, MCP23008 products that we offer. Um, today I'm going to be using a 4-Relay IoT interface relay controller, which we can take a look at uh, right here is what the board looks like. And basically it's got four relays on it, and then we also have four additional GPIO ports uh, available over here on these screw terminals. Uh, plugged into that board, I have a USB to I2C adapter, which is made to plug into the IoT interface port uh, right here. So basically what that do, does is that lets me plug this relay controller into the USB port of a computer. Now that computer could be a Windows computer, a Mac, a Linux computer, something like a Raspberry Pi, uh, you name it. Pretty much anything with the USB port that's capable of running uh, Node Red. So the other way that you can do this is you can you could plug in an I2C adapter and plug this directly into the I2C port of a Raspberry Pi. I'm not going to get into that, just know that that is possible. So uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to install the MCP23008 module for Node Red. Now right now, at the time that this article is written, um, the way that we do that is to manually install it through the terminal using NPM. Um, I won't get into that too much, but NPM is just an installer for Node-RED or for uh, Node.js modules. So we're just going to say NPM install NCD. Oh, and also we need to make sure that we are in the uh, root directory where Node-RED is installed. So right now I'm in my user directory. Node-RED is installed in my user directory. So I'm going to do a uh, change directory to Node-RED. Uh, there we're in the node red directory and that's where you want to be at to install the module. So now we'll just call uh, npm install uh, ncd-red-mcp23008 Okay, and that will have installed it for us. And at this point, we want to go ahead and run Node Red. And you will need to have Node Red installed. We have uh, accompanying uh, articles about installing Node Red. Uh, if you go to ncd.io, that's actually our learn page, and just search for Node Red, you're going to see an article called Node Red and ncd.io products. You can go there, and that'll give you the rundown on installing Node Red and how to use it. Um, there's also an article uh, to go along with this video called Using Node Red to Control the MCP23008, which also covers this ins installation process. So now that we've got uh, Node Red installed uh, and we've got the MCP23008 module uh, installed, we are actually ready to open up uh, Node Red in our web browser. So to do that, we're going to go to localhost colon 1880 is the default port that node Red listens on. So I'll open that up and you're going to see some flows that I already have here, um, but we're going to go over this blank flow to keep things simple. So once you are in node Red here, if you look over here on the left uh, at your palette, if you scroll down, um, you're going to see uh, an NCD uh, section here. And we're going to have the NCD MCP23008 since we just installed that node. So what we're going to want to do is drag that out onto our flow. Now the first thing you're going to see is a little red uh, triangle here. That means something's wrong or something needs some configuration. So we're going to go ahead and double click on it uh, to open it up. And we can give this a name. Uh, you don't really have to, but just something like NCD I2C port. Um, and then for our I2C uh, connection, we're going to want to click the little pencil over here, the edit button. And it's going to ask us for a communication type. Now you heard me earlier say that you could connect directly to the I2C port of something like a Raspberry Pi or something that has a native I2C bus. Uh, in that particular case, you would select I2C bus. 
For me in particular, I'm actually running Node-RED on a Mac. Uh, this would be the same if you're running on a Linux computer or a Windows computer. You're going to want to click, select NCD USB. And to use NCD USB, you are going to need one of our adapter modules, uh, something like this. Um, there's a few other variants of this, but this is the particular one that I'm using. So you're going to want to select that. You're going to want to uh, make sure that the board is plugged in via USB to your computer. My board is. It's powered up and ready to go. And then we're going to click this drop down. It's going to show us basically everything in the dev TTY. Uh, on Windows, you're going to see all your COM ports. So this is the particular port that my uh, controller is connected to. So I'll click on that. And we're going to leave I2C port set to zero. The only uh, reason you would ever change that is if you're using one of our Bridge X5 boards that has more than one I2C port on it. So if you don't have a Bridge X5, just leave that set to zero and then click Add. Okay, so that sets up our I2C communications to the board. Uh, now we need to set the address for the board. Our relay controllers uh, have address jumpers on them. Pretty much anything we make with an MCP23008 is going to have three address jumpers on them. And you can see those address jumpers right here in this photo. If you do not have the jumpers installed across the two pins, then it's at its default address, which is 32. If you install a jumper zero, that's going to actually change it to 33. Um, address, if you had only the second address jumper installed, that's going to change it to 34. And if you only had the third address jumper installed, that's going to change it to 36. Basically, um, this is the one bit, the two bit, and the three bit, uh, or the four bit, however you want to look at that. So anyway, enough about that. So our address is 32. Uh, interval is the um, rate at which Node-RED will check the status of the GPIOs on the board. So let's say we've got relays on here that's going to be how often it checks to see if the relay is on or not. We also have those four additional GPIOs which we could actually set as inputs. This will be the interval that also checks those. So um, I generally recommend setting this something to one, like 100, that's milliseconds. So that's every 100 milliseconds it's going to check the status of the relay outputs and the, uh, any inputs you might have. Um, and then we're going to want to select uh, only send messages on change. So if the status of the relay changes, then our uh, node module here will actually output a message payload. So we only want that to happen if something happens. And then we're going to want to check uh, output all channels. If you don't output all channels, then you're only going to have one output from your node module and it's going to be a JSON object and inside that JSON object you'll have the status of all the inputs. If you look at my node module over here right now you see it has one in and one out. Um, whenever I uh, update this you're going to see this thing uh, jump in size and I'm going to have actually have nine outputs over here. Um, I'm going to go ahead, uh, since this is a four channel relay controller, I think I'm going to want to use the additional four GPIOs on the screw terminals as inputs. So I'm going to uh, uncheck these boxes because I want them to be inputs. You only want to check them if they're outputs. And after that you click done and there you go. And you'll see that we no longer have the little red triangle um, because we're all set up and ready to go. So let's keep this simple. Um, we want to turn on a relay. Okay. So pretty much the simplest way to do that is to use an inject module or node. Uh, so we'll drag that over here. And this is just going to let us click a little button here to make something happen. OK, so let's double click on that. And uh, let's input what we want to uh, send out here. We're going to want to send out a number. And uh, we're going to want to send out a 1. because Let's send out a 2. Two toggles of relay. 0 turns a relay off, 1 turns a relay on, and 2 toggles the relay. Uh, for the topic, this is where we can specify which relay we want to control. So we're going to want to do channel underscore and then the relay number. So let's just do relay 1. And uh, we'll set that to repeat none. Um, and we'll give it a name of turn on relay 1, or toggle, I guess. and click done. 
All right, and now all that we need to do is connect the dots here. Just drag from there to there. And that should do it. So we'll go ahead and click deploy. And uh, well, you know, one other thing that we might go ahead and do here is throw up a debug. Um, I'm going to print out the, uh, the status whenever, um, whenever the relay turns on. So basically this, uh, this little dot right here, you see that's GPIO1, which is going to be relay one on my four channel relay board. We've also got relay GPIO2, 3, 4, all the way through 8 down here. And then we have our device status, which is going to be a JSON object with all that information inside of it. So what I've done here is I've uh, uh, connected the output status of GPIO1 to my, uh, to my debug log. And basically that's just going to print over here and debug whenever something happens. Okay, So uh, let's go ahead and deploy it that way now. Okay, and uh, we'll see that whenever we click the relay, uh, oh, I need to uh, come over here and turn this guy off because it's messing with us. All right. Okay. So we click the button there and it turns the relay on. Click it again, it turns it off. We're toggling the relay. Very simple. And you'll see over here in the debug log, we get uh, uh, output. So if I click this button to turn the relay on here, we'll see a one here, which is basically uh, just that the relay turned on. The, the node here has told us that, hey, relay one's on now. So, um, so that's a toggle. Let's, do, uh, let's just turn the relay on. So we can drag another one here and uh, let's connect it and edit it and we want to send a number and we want to send a one this topics also going to be channel underscore one and the name of this one is going to be turn on relay one okay and then let's uh we'll go ahead and make sure that's selected and uh um, hit Command C on Mac or Control C on Windows to copy it, and Command V or Control V to paste it. And we'll just go into this one, and we're simply going to have this output a payload of zero. And we're going to change this to turn off relay one, and we will deploy. And now you'll see if we click the on here, we uh, we turn on the relay, and if we click off, we turn off the relay. Off, on, on, and off. Pretty simple. So if we look at this, see we're sending a payload of two from the toggle. Um, the uh, the NCD uh, MCP two three zero zero eight expects a zero if you want to turn a GBIO channel off, a one if you want to turn it on, and a two if you want to toggle that channel. And then the topic uh, is just going to be channel underscore whatever the top whatever the uh, channel number is. Uh, for instance, if we want to do the same time on Relay 4, then we just put in a 4 here. Okay? And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, I didn't want to get too in-depth uh, with this first article here, but uh, in the next article, we'll do something a little more fun, a little more complicated, but this is just a uh, good way to get your feet wet with the uh, MCP library. So thanks for watching, and have fun.